Hi, I'm Joe, and I'm going to be talking to you about how to install the Treehouse Supplies Modular Treehouse Attachment System Retrofit Strut, one of these right here. So what is a strut? Well, a strut is a, uh, a steel uh, uh, member that's designed to reinforce the Treehouse Supplies Treehouse Attachment Bolts. This right here is a 6x12 Treehouse Attachment Bolt, or 6x12 tab. That means it has a 6-inch collar that can be embedded in the tree, uh, and then a 12 inch perch with a bracket that allows the, the beam to rest away from the tree uh, to build your tree house. So why use a strut? Although these tabs are extremely strong and depending on the species of tree uh, that they're embedded in and how deep they're embedded can hold thousands of pounds uh, of load uh, before failure, there are certain applications which might require a little extra strength. The MTAS strut is one of the ways to achieve that strength. When working with a Treehouse Supplies tab, you may mount the MTAS support bracket on the end of your tab. Then when the tree, when the tab is embedded in the tree, the load can be supported here and your strut will be supporting the end of the tab. So instead of this weight being in single shear, which is going to cause the tab to, to want to rotate in the tree, having the strut attached to this end puts the weight in between in what's called double shear, which is a much stronger configuration and allows the tab to use a lot more of the tree's strength to support the weight of the beam. Now, ideally, when you design your treehouse support system, you would know that your tab is going to need an MTAS strut support, in which case, when you install it, you'd install the bracket, and then you'd install the top uh, bracket of the MTAS uh, strut, and then you would install the nut. So they're all together on the perch when you turn the tab into the tree. So as the nut gets very tight on the end of the tab, you don't have to worry about taking it off and then putting it back on again. However, there's some applications where you might realize after you've installed the tab that you act, you need to support um, the, uh, the, the tab with additional strength. This is when you would use one of our MTAS retrofit brackets. The difference is the normal MTAS bra uh, support bracket is just a pipe bracket. The retrofit bracket is actually split and you can remove the top of the bracket and install it onto the tab after the tab has been installed. In this specific application, this is the only type of strut that will work. This tab here is supporting a platform uh, and you can see that the pipe bracket is install installed on the extreme end of the tab. This is important for a couple of reasons. One, with the beam riding so far on the outside of the tab, it puts a lot of stress on, on the tab itself as it is embedded in the tree. This tab is stable and showing no signs of failure right now, but if this platform were loaded with a, with a large group, um, it could, over time, uh, put this tab in jeopardy. So what we're going to do is install a retrofit pipe bracket behind the pipe bracket in a place that we couldn't, we couldn't reach uh, if we tried to come in from the end of the shaft. So we're gonna install it back here, and then we're gonna install it into the tree to support this, uh, this tab and give it more strength um, over time. All right, let's talk about the components of the MTAS support strut. Uh, we first have the, the ends, uh, we've got the regular pipe bracket end, which is an enclosed pipe that slides right on the perch or, uh, or goes into the, uh, the bottom of the tree using a uh, one and a quarter inch, eight inch long treehouse supplies lag screw. So the bottom of the strut is going to attach to the tree using this screw. This could also be used as the top of the strut in a traditional pre-install application, but in our case, we're gonna use this retrofit bracket that has, uh, that it's opened up. It's held in place by a couple of Allen screws, uh, which use a 3 16th or a five millimeter Allen wrench to, uh, to tighten down. The strut bodies are here. They're sold at Treehouse Supplies in a two foot, three foot, and four foot length. We're gonna be using a three foot length for our application right here. When you purchase a, an MTAS strut, you'll receive a, a bag of hardware. In that bag of hardware are the following items. You should find four nylon spatial washers, 
There's gonna be two gold grade eight high strength uh, bolts, two gold grade eight high strength uh, lock nuts, and then you're gonna have two uh, rod ends. Now, these are very important. Um, they are right hand and left hand threaded, and they come with jam nuts, the little silver ones, which are also right hand and left hand threaded. You can't put a left hand nut on a right hand bolt and vice versa. The way to tell the difference is your left hand nut is going to have a mark on it with an arrow right there showing the direction you have to turn it to tighten it, which is lefty tighty, not righty tighty as a normal right hand nut is going to be. The first thing you're gonna do is match your nuts to your, uh, to your rod end bolts. And you're gonna to wanna to thread these nuts all the way up to the collar, uh, the very end of these bolts. All right, once you have your jam nuts threaded all the way to the end, and again, it's very important, they're threaded all the way to the end. There's no thread showing between the jam nut and the end of the rod end. Once you have them threaded in, you're gonna thread them into your pipe. Unfortunately, there's not a, diff there's not a way to tell uh, other than visually inspecting uh, which which end is which one of these is left hand threaded one of them is right hand threaded really the best way of doing it is taking one of your rod ends and just trying to thread it in if it goes in you've got the right end if it doesn't you've got the wrong end just put it in the other end you're going to thread these all the way down until the jam nut is touching the the nut at the end of the strut body once you've installed the rod ends on the strut body it's time to put the brackets on the way you do this, you take the bracket, you're going to start threading one of the bolts through the hole. What I like to do is I like to drop the washers in as I go, that way I don't lose track of them. So it goes, uh, the bolt goes through the uh, one tab uh, of the bracket, then through the washer, then through the entire uh, top of the rod end, and I'm going to drop another washer in here. And these washers just space the rod end uh, and keep it centered in between the, uh, the, the tabs. And then I'm, I'm going to hand thread one of these lock nuts on. They have a nylon uh, insert in here to lock onto the threads. So once that nylon makes contact with the threads, it's really difficult to do it by hand. Once I have both the top and bottom bracket installed onto the uh, strut body, and I have the, uh, the nuts tightened down, um, I'm gonna take a, a 15 16 socket and, uh, and another and a 15 6 open, open wrench or a, an adjustable wrench, and I'm just going to crank it down. You're not looking to, to crank it super tight but the nut and bolt should be in contact with the ear tabs and you should see the thread start to protrude through the nylon uh, ensuring that the entire strut is locked in place there's still plenty of clearance so that the uh, the bracket the bracket itself uh, is free to pivot which is important for installation now that I've installed the ends onto my MTAS strut um, I'm going to go to the retrofit bracket side the one that split I'm going to remove the top plate using my 3 16 Allen wrench. Being careful to keep track of the little lock washers that come with the screws, because we'll need them when we install them. I'm going to take both screws off. And set them aside. Now that we've assembled our MTAS retrofit strut and prepared it for installation, let's install it. The last thing I want to mention before we do this is that these brackets um, uh, have a slight angle to them. Uh, that's to help everything align as you install it. It's very important that when they're installed, the top bracket, whichever bracket's in top, uh, has the ear tabs angled slightly in toward the tree. The bracket that's on the bottom has the ear tabs angled slightly away from the tree. This will ensure that everything is aligned and works properly once it's installed. We're going to take our open-ended retrofit bracket and we're going to move it up to the tab that we're going to install it in. I'm going to hold it right here uh, and I want to get it as far out on the tab so it's supporting this, this beam as closely as possible. I'm going to hold it in place. And I'm going to take the top plate with the screw and I'm going to install it right back into the welded nuts that are in the bottom half of the bracket. 
Once one nut is in there, it'll hold itself in place. I can use both hands to install the second nut, second bolt into the nut. All right, I've got the bolts in place, but it's still not very tight. I haven't tightened them down. The, uh, the bracket is still free to slide on the perch. I'm gonna slide it all the way out so it's butting up against the, uh, uh, the pipe bracket that is holding this beam up. If I were installing it on this side of the pipe bracket, I would move it all the way out until it's butting up against the back side, the back face of the tab nut itself. I want something positive, I want positive contact uh, for this strut. Uh, to be able to press against and not rely on the clamping strength of the bolts to hold it in place on the perch. Now that I've attached the top bracket to the tab, I'm going to align the bottom bracket with the tree. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to swing the entire assembly until it makes contact with the tree. I want to be more or less directly below uh, the tab that I'm supporting. And I want to be about in the center of the tree. Um, it can move left and right a, a few inches if you need to avoid a knot hole uh, or something else. But you want it uh, as close to the center of the tree as possible. You want the back side, the back face of the bracket to be flush uh, with the surface of the tree. The drill bit I'm using is an inch and an eighth ship auger. Um, on a softer wood like maybe a white pine, I could use an inch and a sixteenth. Uh, but this inch and an eighth is going to be fine for this cherry tree that we're drilling in right now. Uh, it'll, uh, even though the hole is a little bit bigger, uh, the wood is hard enough that there's going to be plenty of bite for those big aggressive threads on our inch and a quarter uh, lag screw that we'll use to install it. I'm going to place this right in the center of the bracket and I'm going to begin to drill. All right, once I've drilled about six inches into the tree, I'm gonna keep my drill in forward, but I'm gonna pull my drill out and this will help clean the hole out. Now I'm ready to install the bottom of the, of the strap. I'm gonna take my inch and a quarter lag screw and I'm gonna put it right into the hole that I've just finished drilling. I'm gonna give it a little tap and I might have to slide the bracket all the way up to make contact with the tree so it's letting the, so it's allowing the screw to go in straight. Now I'll take my ratchet with its uh, one and seven eighth inch socket and just start turning the screw in. All right, we're getting close to the end. The screw is almost in place. It's starting to squeeze the body of the bracket up against the bark of the tree. You don't need to squeeze it too tight, but it should be resting and embedded in at least in the layer of bark. You need a little hand. At this point, you can take a cheater bar, some type of steel pipe, slide it on the handle of a ratchet, and that can just get you a few extra turns just to snug it up. Let's take a look here. Make sure that we're in full contact with the bracket. And the bracket is in contact with the tree. All right, zoom in here. As you can see, the head, the face of the bolt the head of the bolt on the inside is touching the bracket and the bracket is embedded in the first layer of bark on the tree. The ear tab on the bottom is angled out slightly away from the tree. And the ear tab on the top attached to our retrofit bracket is angled out into the angle down toward the tree. Now all you have to do is rotate the bar in your hands and you'll feel the tension start to build up. You want a, you want a low tension between the, the uh, upper and lower ends of the strut. Because they're left and right hand threaded, all you have to do is turn them one direction and you can feel them start to tense up. And you actually see it slide out to the end. You're gonna expose a few threads, 
uh, as you do this. But there should never should never be more than a couple of threads if you install them correctly with the jam nuts right up against the top. Let's do that again. You can see that as I'm tensioning it, I'm sliding the bracket until that bracket makes contact with the back face with the back face of the pipe bracket, which is supporting this beam. As I tension it more, you can start to feel the force that it's providing, pressing upward on the end of this perch, supporting the weight of this beam on this pipe bracket. Once I've hand tightened it as far as I can go, I'm now gonna take these jam nuts, I'm gonna rotate them until they make contact with the end of the strut body. This is what's gonna lock the strut in place and make sure that it doesn't go anywhere after we've installed it. I'm gonna tighten them up to the strut body. Using my open-ended adjustable wrench, just so that they're snug. Again, I'm tightening them to the strut body, not to the rod end at the end. Now your strut is installed. I'm going to tighten up the little bolts on the top of the retrofit bracket to lock them in place. And now you have increased the strength of this tab by a factor of two to three uh, times, at least depending on the geometry of installation. Any questions, feel free to reach out to us at treehousesupplies.com. Thanks for watching.